pranams to all of you <clears throat> what is mind what is the human mind you know various psychologists from the west and so many other places they've all defined what is mind you know if you take uh, for example sigmund freud one of the earliest psychologists from the west he talks about the ego id the super ego and so on and so forth there are other psychologists i mean in general the western psychology talks about the mind as conscious subconscious unconscious but what exactly is the mind you know we go on talking about my mind pointing to the head you know so what is mind what is the human mind where is it in the head in the brain is it what the brain scientists keep telling us and they want us to believe that mind is an epiphenomenon of the brain right mind or they use the word consciousness is the by product of the functioning of the brain but if you look at our ancient indian culture our great rishis and sages and yogis and munis of ancient india and even now <clears throat> what do they say manas that's the word they use manas chitta ahangara you know various names for various modifications of the mind right we'll come to that in fact that is the topic of today's video no i remember this great physicist contemporary of albert einstein paul dirac niels bohr heisenberg and so on erwin schrodinger he was a great lover of india you know he knew vedanta he knew upanishads he used to read bhagavad gita you know very fond of india had great reverence for india in fact people you know during his last days they found on his bedside table copies of the upanishads and he is the author of wave mechanics many of you know that so erwin schrodinger once said the total number of minds in the universe or the multiverse is one i repeat again schrodinger said the total number of minds in the entire universe is one which means that that is what our rishis were saying all these days that is what our sages were telling us day in and day out there is only one mind for example the earth has only one atmosphere and all life on planet earth share that atmosphere similarly our sages and rishis have been telling us mind is one there is only one mind human mind and all the bodies billions of bodies human bodies on this planet share that mind of course there is a personal element to that also right so what if you if you search for the mind where is it where is it not right so we are going to go a little bit into what the great maharshi patanjali says about the mind right in fact modifications of the mind different states of the mind before we go into that a couple of stories for you i will take the first story from the great swami vivekananda swami ji maharaj you know 
all of us know swami ji was known for his concentration tremendous attention of the mind all of us know that you know he used to take a book a big book however big read the first few lines of the first page skip the whole book read the last few lines of the last page the entire book is in his consciousness you ask any question from anywhere the answer will just come what page what is in page for example 369 thak the answer comes what is there in 412 it comes extraordinary powers of the mind in fact swami ji during his talks both in india and western countries he spoke a great deal about the powers of the human mind the inherent power of the human mind how powerful the human mind could be don't compare that with our normal standard mind no comparison in fact all of us have that faculty have that power but most of us we don't know most of us we don't know right when swami ji sits in meditation don't get it wrong they don't do meditation meditation is not something that can be done it is not an activity right meditation is being being in your own stupendous effulgent nature who you really are dhyanam that is the meaning of the word dhyanam it is not a doing it is not an activity so when swami ji used to sit that way absorbed no one dare approach him even with a 10 foot barge pole you can't because that was the power radiating right so uh, another story from the great isaac newton all of you know isaac newton he was also known for his concentration of mind tremendous attention two little stories from his life you know once Isaac Newton was working in his lab at home and as he was working he observed that he was falling asleep never happened in his life again he shook himself up focused his attention and was trying to you know work but he fell asleep again shook up got up started working again sleepiness so isaac newton wondered what's going on i've never felt this way before what's going on he thought a great deal what did i do what happened suddenly he remembered he forgot to sleep for 3 days get that forgot to sleep for 3 days can you can you believe that will that that kind of a thing ever happen to people like us for forgetting to sleep right there's another little story about isaac newton once his friends came home and you know many of you know that isaac sir isaac newton was a bachelor he didn't get married thank god he didn't get married and his friends came home one day one evening and newton went to his kitchen to get wine for his friends so he took a tray put all the cups and poured wine there in each cup and then he was about to take the wine to his friends something caught his attention and he stood there and those people out there in the hall waiting for newton to come half an hour over 45 minutes over 1 hour over they were wondering what's going on with newton 
he said he'll get some wine for us and then where is this man so a couple of friends went to his kitchen to find out what what actually is doing and there he found newton with a tray with a wine cup filled standing there absolutely motionless like a rock and of course his friends understood you know they were friends with newton for so many years they understood newton's nature once he's caught up in some attention you know some uh, work or whatever his mind is attentive dare not disturb him you can't disturb him and so they very quietly walked back to the hall and told the other friends uh, forget it newton won't come back now right attention there's another story i'll draw from the great sri aurobindo you know the mother of aurobindo ashram used to say you know one day there was a mighty storm and heavy rain you know in pondicherry and sri aurobindo was sitting in his room upstairs and the mother wanted to go because heavy winds and heavy rainfall almost storm you know pondicherry on the sea shore so the mother wanted to go up and uh, you know see whether the doors and windows of sri aurobindo's rooms are all closed and you know uh, aurobindo is safe and all that so she went up and she was about to enter sri aurobindo's room and she saw aurobindo sitting there on a table and writing something and the mother says when she, you know within a second she understood what was going on you know the intensity of his concentration the the power of his mind was so intense he was so focused in writing whatever that was you know even the rain water the wind could not enter the room the mother's observation right that was the power of his mind and all these sages you know if you um, ask swami vivekananda or shri aurobindo or isaac newton or anybody they'll tell you all this is there in everybody every single human being has this capacity then why are we not manifesting that why are we not exhibiting that because we don't know we don't know that the human mind has so much of powers we have never even read it nobody in our schools or colleges or universities ever told us nobody taught us about ourselves you understand in the name of education we did something else yeah it will get a job for you get some money car house and then what where is happiness where is joy where is peace where is shraddha where is the higher aspects of the mind of the universe so nobody really taught us all this so we don't know right so look at the way maharshi patanjali classifies not really classifies this is how he looks at the human mind the human mind can exist in five different ways modifications same mind one mind only but it can exist and express itself in five different ways what are they maharshi patanjali says the f- one of the first common expression movement of the mind nature of the mind state of the mind he uses the sanskrit word kshipta k s i p t a kshipta what does it mean restless chaos confused unstable agitated all the time erratic non stop moving here and there here and there here and there right restless that's the first state of the mind kshipta right 
second one second modification state of the mind vikshipta maharshi patanjali calls it vikshipta what is vikshipta this kind of a mind this state of the mind can pay attention but if a distraction comes along it diverts its attention it is distracted easily distracted for example i am in a class taking a class all the students are paying attention and at that moment suddenly let's say a celebrity enters right a film star a, you know a sports person somebody enters a celebrity enters what will happen will they still the students will they still paying be paying attention to me no right i mean this is a gross example but is understandable right easily distracted confused that's vikshipta right the third modification mudha what is mudha dull lethargic sleepy heavy tamasic dark right in fact if you really observe yourself if at all you have done that if at all you have been encouraged taught at least you have read heard that there is something called knowing yourself knowing oneself if you, if you have ever observed your own mind you will understand that the mind you know different times it is different state sometimes it is calm very rarely most of the time it is agitated confused don't know what to do where to go right most human beings 97 to 99 percent of the human beings on this planet earth they the first three states of the mind apply to them most of us are in kshipta or vikshipta or mudha right watch observe you'll understand the fourth modification what is the fourth modification ekagra what is ekam one ekagra one pointedness of the mind right it it, it is this is an inherent capacity of the mind you don't have to practice do something and get it there is no it's already there it has to be awakened how will it awaken when you know that there is such a power in the mind right ekagra swami vivekananda isaac newton and you name it albert einstein c v raman any number of people any number of people artists scientists of course yogis and rishis you don't have to ask they are in a, they are way beyond ekagra also so children for example right when they are caught up in a i mean a toy for example right or they are watching something look at their attention have you seen a, a, a you know a, a lion or a tiger maybe in the zoo or your domestic cat when a prey comes right have you seen a cat absolutely quiet unmoving the eyes don't move so focused you know i remember reading this report somewhere some years ago many years ago behavioral scientists observed discovered over a period of time that the attention span of a modern human being is 8 seconds 8 seconds the attention span of a modern human being like us 8 seconds only at a time right they also observed discovered that the attention span of a goldfish now how they measured how i don't know 
This is what I read. The attention span of a goldfish that you have in your fish tank and aquarium. Nine seconds. That guy is better than us. Right? In schools and colleges, have you seen the, the, the time allotted to each period? In schools, 40 minutes. Maximum 45 minutes. Colleges might go a little up. Not beyond that. Very rarely you will have classes going beyond one and a half hours. Because people who are sitting there will not be able to sustain their attention. Maybe when a Swami Vivekananda talks, or Swami Chinmayananda ji talks, or Krishna ji talks, or Bhagawan without even talking, that kind of attention is different. People will sit there two hours, three hours, because that is something enthralling. But normal people, we are talking about normal people. Right? Now, how far this attention span for modern... Maybe it looks like that. Look at our human beings. Look at our young people, unfortunately, sadly. They don't pay attention except the smartphone, which is a big distraction. No. Even us, all of us. So, Kshipta, restless, Vikshipta, easily distracted, Muda, dull, heavy, lethargic, Ekhagra, one-pointedness of the mind. Beyond that, there is one more. Niruddha. What is Niruddha? Absolutely stable, absolutely still, silent, quiet, right? Absolutely still, not a single vritti. Patanjali uses the word vritti, movement. Absolutely still. And there is no time there. Start at 7 o'clock, mind is still, until 8 o'clock, mind is still. No, it doesn't work like that. There is no time there. This is beyond time. Right? Niruddha. Look at our rishis. Look at Ramana Bhagavan, look at Swami Vivekananda, look at Sri Ramakrishna, look at all the great yogis and sages and rishis of this marvelous country called Bharata Varsha. Right? I mean, how did they come to this? Because they observed themselves, they looked at themselves, they wanted to find out who is this me? Who am I? What am I? You know, in a previous video, I have, I have often you know, said this. The basis of Indian culture is spirituality. And what is spirituality? To know, to understand, to realize yourself, who you really are. Not intellectually. You know, there are three levels, verbal, verbal understanding, intellectual understanding, actual understanding. So the actual is anubhuti, direct experiencing. So when you realize who you really are, not the body, not the mind, not the personality, not the brain as the, you know, so-called scientists keep telling us. No, 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 way beyond all that. So when you, as a normal human being, you know, really become interested in yourself, not from the ego point of view. No, 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 no. That is not interest at all. Really want to find out what is going on here. Right? Hundreds and hundreds of thoughts come in and go out. Emotions, sensations, feelings. So it's a, it's a complex movement right in consciousness consciousness is not a byproduct of the human brain please understand this consciousness is not an epiphenomenon of the brain it's the other way consciousness 
is the origin the substratum brain is just an instrument through which consciousness operates in this three third density world in this physicality that is what our rishis have been telling us since millennia all our upanishads our vedanta our yoga dhyana you take anything you know in our ancient rishis and yogis and you know munis and all that for them science and spirituality were were not two it was one right it was one it's a human intellect which goes on dividing this is right this is wrong this is noble this is ignoble this is agreeable this is not agreeable this is science this is spirituality that is spirituality this is materialism all kinds of divisions right so when you become interested in observing yourself because you 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 want to know what is going on and then when you observe you will observe all that maharshi patanjali has said right this is universal there is no such thing as a western mind indian mind chinese mind korean mind mind is one it ex- its expressions manifestations may change according to the culture according to the body you have according to your parents hundreds and millions and billions of factors but mind is one shodinga right so this is what patanjali says the great maharshi patanjali these are the states of the mind you know one some you know uh, krishna ji the great krishna ji was telling to a psychologist i remember i don't remember the exact situation he was telling sir we know for sure there is no such thing as a subconscious mind as an unconscious mind there is only consciousness most parts of that consciousness you the me doesn't know therefore you brand it unconscious subconscious but when you really become fully conscious fully aware you will understand there is no such division at all it's one that is what our great rishis were often telling us we better pay attention to them right thank you pranams to all of you